if you want to sell erotica in a way that is going to please both sexes, which is something, by the way, you're going to absolutely need to do, you're going to have to do it in a way that is not only cinematic, but sensual. Which is why I think Zack Snyder should direct porno. Let me, okay, let me break down why porn needs compelling storytelling, all right? No, 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 and I mean this, like, this is me being, like, a legitimate critic of porn, okay? Now, just real quick, though, I, I did see this one here. Uh, Mario says, just Watchmen again, the scene when Owlman and Silk Spectre, it gives his ideas on what he watches. That's very true. Hallelujah plays, which is oddly enough his daughter's favorite song. We're not going to go into that. That's a joke, by the way. That is a joke. That is a joke. But I love the fact that... Uh, that the what was it merlin the flamethrower goes off to signal uh ejaculation and by the way we don't know we see here's the thing we think by the way at that point in time that the ejaculation is uh owl man's ejaculation but here's something that popped up in army of the dead you might have missed this is a mild light spoiler nothing story but it is something that a character was wearing so what we have here is uh is uh, let me get this off the screen here this shirt is being worn in the opening credits of the movie the future is female ejaculation this is not a joke netflix themselves tweeted this out today i didn't notice it when i was watching the movie but this is during the opening credits so in in watchmen we know that there is a climax segment of that sex scene right there's a climax segment of that sex scene we all meant we all thought it was owl man but here, Zach is clearly pro-female ejaculation. And he put it on a t-shirt. And it's in that old kind of, you know, 1970s uh, uh, font, which I really enjoy. I forget the font, like, you know, like baseball type stuff, right? So anyway, anyway, so that exists, by the way, guys. So that, that exists. But let me get back to the concept of talking about why porn needs a compelling story. So what is ultimately the idea of pornography? The idea of pornography is for climax. It is for getting off. It is for that. That is the general concept of it. Watch people have sex. It turns you on in your lizard brain. You want to have sex or you want to get yourself to that place. Fine. Now, porn, I am, I am a pro porn advocate, by the way. But the thing with porn is that too much of it can, in fact, desensitize people. And the more you watch of it, the more you start seeking out what gives you a reaction. And that is also very true. And so that's why I think we're in the situation right now when you go to these websites, why you find nothing but the scenes of like, hey, step bro, what are you doing? And, you know, like very, 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 very questionable storylines in some of these videos. But what I'm talking about in regards to the compelling nature of good storytelling is when you watch a movie, with a good story and good characterization, don't you find yourself in that movie? Don't you subconsciously put yourself in those character shoes? Don't you want to spend more time with those characters and you feel a certain way when it's all over? Remember what I was talking about the other day? I was talking about that show on Netflix that had really good characterization. And at the end of four seasons, you felt that there was a connection between these brothers and the fact that it was coming to the end in the way that it was, was absolutely sad. It was, it was, it made me sad as a viewer. And I mean, again, what I'm talking about here is boss baby back in business, a very good four season show on Netflix. I recommend you check it out by the end. You'll be hooked and you'll be sad that it's over because there was compelling enough characterization and compelling enough storytelling. Now, what does this have to do with porno? Ultimately nothing. But when you think about a story that's being told from a compelling perspective, you get invested. When you get invested, you actually form attachments with these characters. You form emotional bonds with these characters. It's one of the reasons why that, you know, all of these networks have, have given people generations of people now PTSD uh, from all of these shows being ripped away without ever getting a proper conclusion, no proper climax, blue balled, if you will. And as a result of that, people kind of have this, they don't want to invest the time. They want it quick and dirty and done because why invest the time when you might not get what you want at the end? Okay. It's all about relationships, all about building and forming relationships. When you watch a porno that has a compelling enough story, compelling enough acting, and it gives you that whole emotional angle that goes into the sex, 
then it becomes a much more deeper and intimate experience. Now, again, many of you out there might argue that it doesn't need to be intimate. Why would porn need to be intimate? Why, why ever would this need to be intimate? It, of course not. You might think that, but then again, we're talking about people when you have actual sex in your life, when you have relations with somebody, you want it to be intimate. When it comes to men, the idea of sex is generally regarded as just, you know, rub, get hard, put into a moist place, preferably warm, thrust, rinse, repeat, done. Okay. It's a very simple concept in order to get men to the place of getting off. But women, on the other hand, women, it's more emotional and you have to build up there. You have to build it up with a compelling enough story. You know, men would generally be willing to have sex with a woman on the first date. Women generally, it takes a little longer to get there. There's kind of like that third date rule we've all kind of heard floated around in, in, in polite society. But all things considered, it's like it takes time for women to get to the point of forming a bond with that person and wanting to open themselves up to that kind of relationship. So in porn, if you were able to tell those kind of stories and create that kind of bond, it would be a much more, I believe, intimate, rich, and rewarding experience. Now, at the end of the day, are, are my thoughts ever going to like come to fruition with the industry? Of course not. Their, their whole entire business model is pump and dump. They shoot it. They don't care what the context of it is. They shoot it. They exploit the people who work in the industry. They, they physically abuse them in many cases, get them hooked on drugs in many cases, and put it out there in a way that really does, that really does alter the perspective of what sex is. Because if you ever go into a situation and you think that sex is going to happen in the first five minutes, because that's what you've kind of trained your brain to think about, then you're in for some serious and utter disappointment. And that is kind of where we find ourselves with this whole thing. So let's say, for example, Zack Snyder wants to come on in. And Zack Snyder wants to tell a compelling enough story. Let's say, let's say Zack Snyder wants to tell something that is as deep and philosophical as Batman v Superman. I know you're thinking, is Batman v Superman deep and philosophical? The answer to that question is absolutely. Chris Terrio's screenplay very much crafted a very deep and philosophical tale of these two differing perspectives and, and, and being kind of at the edges, at least with Batman's character. There's a lot there to kind of unpack. The same thing goes. With Justice League, even the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, and even Man of Steel has a lot of that in there as well. You can tell that there's good characterization. And of course, it leads to something that is full of heart and full of love and about trying to overcome your demons. So if they were to take something as compelling as that and they were to put it into a porno where instead of the action scenes, those scenes were more or less sex scenes, you could get something that I think would probably go a decent way of breaking a fair amount of bank. Like we would have a mainstream pornography film, 50 shades of gray, very close to that. And I mean, in regards to the attempt, not the execution, the execution was God awful. The execution was terrible. Those movies are just, they're, they're, they're flippantly offensive. Those movies are because they're so bad, but the books, but the books crafted a narrative with its readers, predominantly women, predominantly housewives of a little bit of danger, a little bit of excitement. They built up these relationships between these two characters and explored BDSM in a way that was wildly, wildly juvenile and simplistic and not at all indicative of the actual work that goes into BDSM, never mind like the post-care scenario. But women still found themselves connected with these characters because they read about them. They spent time with this relationship as it grew over three seasons or three books, three movies. Now the movies, they were designed to be a cash grab. That's all they were. That's all they were. I mean, it went as far as even putting digital pubes on Dakota Johnson. Like that is literally what they did in that movie. But if they would have taken it and they would have spent more time actually building out the relationship and not making it as one dimensional as it was theatrically, the sequels could have probably done a little bit more because the first movie did half a billion. The second two did not. And I think that's because there was a lack of intimacy that was there in the books that was compelling to the female going audience, which is exactly why if you want to, if you want to sell erotica in a way that is going to please both sexes, which is something, by the way, you're going to absolutely need to do. You're going to have to do it in a way that is not only cinematic, but sensual, which is why I think Zack Snyder should direct porno.